What's up guys? We are here today in the beautiful old port of Montreal and we're about to check out my favorite Italian spot in the whole city, Stellina. Let's go! My name is Massimo Lekas. I am a co-owner of Novantuno Restaurant Group. Uh, we've been uh, doing this since 1991. I guess we're here to talk about the wonderful Stellina. The inspiration behind uh, Stellina is that all our restaurants were taken from famous Italian songs. Not famous, but kind of Italian songs. And there was a song called Stella Stellina. So Buonanotte Fiorellino is a lullaby for your baby. And so is Stella Stellina, which is a way of calling my little star. Okay, okay my little star. So uh, from there uh, came Stellina. We were operating many restaurants. Jonathan, our chef, was working at one of our restaurants and we decided to open Porchetta with it. And uh, that was a very successful operation. We opened Porchetta and uh, eventually, uh, talking to some friends, they told me, you know your best chef that you have in all your company is Jonathan, right? And he's doing sandwiches. From there came the idea to exploit his talents and the birth of Stalina started there. Hi, my name is Jonathan Agnello. I'm the chef owner of Stalina. Basically, we wanted to open something in the city a bit different than everybody else. Nothing too big, nothing too small. And basically trying to give Montreal a taste of the true Italy. It's so diverse and so unknown to Montrealers that what we were thinking was, Let's bring this here. Let's not reinvent the wheel because we don't need to. We just got to do things properly and authentic. And I think we'll be a winner. And so far, I think it's working for us. Off to a good start, baby. First course is uh, focaccia, homemade, fresh every day. Top it with some olive oil, Sicilian oregano. And that's served with our prosciutto butter, which is a bit uh, different from a lot of other places. We mix the best of both worlds uh, between Italy and France. And we also add olive oil, so we have all the fat that you want or need to accompany your bread. Mm. 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 Very, very nice focaccia. We get a nice little crunch outside, as it should be. And the inside is like nice and light and fluffy. And then this, this is just crazy. I think what they do is they whip some butter and they blend some prosciutto trims and, and fat in the butter, then it gives this delicious mixture of salty, meaty, and delicious. Mmm, prosciutto butter, baby. Mmm, 9.5 out of 10. Right. After that, we also have the frisella. So frisella typically is a Pugliese dish from Puglia, south of Italy. A hard bread that we soak it in tomato water just to get it a bit softer and more flavor of tomato. On top is a seasonal tomato salad. So tomato, fresh basil, fresh mint, a bit of onion. And then obviously my Sicilian has to kick in with the, with the raw tuna. So uh, you have a nice explosion of, of uh, freshness with this dish. And you have a bit of fish, which we're strong on, let's say in the south. Mm. Very, very fresh. You can taste the basil hitting you first, first bite. The nice little crunchy from the frisella. Tomatoes are in season right now in Quebec, so very beautiful tomatoes. And some very tender tuna. I'm a big fan of the combo of tuna and tomatoes. It's like the fattiness of the tuna is balanced with the acidity from the tomatoes. Very nice. Mm. Because it's summertime and it's really hot outside, and this is very refreshing, I would give this dish 8.5 out of 10. Let's go. 
So second course, another staple here at Stalina. It's been on the menu since day one. This is where we did a play on a classic and turned it into somewhat vegetarian. The classic dish is the vitello saltimbocca. Saltimbocca is a thinly sliced piece of veal with prosciutto sage. We replaced the veal with king oyster mushroom, so somewhat meaty. That's wrapped in prosciutto and sage and then cooked with uh, a marsala sauce. And at the bottom, you're gonna have some stracchino cheese. So stracchino is a, a creamy cheese from the Lombardy region. So we mix a bit of north and central Italy. That's a dish that we've had since day one and we're not taking it off. Mm. If you don't like mushrooms, you want to get into it, that's a dish you need to try. It's like the meatiest mushroom you can find. Think of a very, very dense mushroom. And then you add the prosciutto in there. Extra beautiful saltiness, meatiness. The sage brings a crazy, nice herb flavor. Fresh cheese to balance it all. And the sauce is just amazing. I'll give this 8.5 out of 10. Let's go, baby. So, uh, third course, agnolotti, classic dish from Piemonte, agnolotti del plin, which means folded and pinched. Although it's not uh, the traditional agnolotti del plin, because we, you know, changed it up a bit, we stuffed it with oxtail. So we braised the oxtail, the meat is grinded, passed with a bit of mascarpone. The liquid that it was braised in will reduce it, and that's going to be our sauce for the pasta. Touch of spinach and mounted with bone marrow. Mmm. Mmm, trade fire. The first thing that hit me is how nice and tender the pasta is. It's cooked to perfection, al dente. You can tell they use the best, the best flour, the best eggs. It's a really good quality pasta. And then once you dig in in there, the richness from the oxtail, the braised oxtail, the mascarpone cheese, it's very rich. And then you have that nice little earthiness coming down from the spinach. And that sauce, which is like the braising liquid, emulsified with bone marrow, just, you know, it's to die for. It's the to die for, delicious. This one is 9.2 out of 10. So fourth course, uh, tagliolini burro parmigiano, as simple and classic as it gets. So you have good quality butter, buffalo butter, and paccherose, which is a type of parmigiano that's aged longer than other parmigianos. And this paccherose is just at another level of, of, of texture and complexity. That's the star of the dish, basically. So we don't touch it, we just try to reproduce it as perfect as possible. And that, there you go. Mm. So you probably had the fettuccine Alfredo in your local Italian restaurant, you know? Imagine that pasta as a Ford Pinto and this being a Lamborghini, you know? Again, that's what the best thing about Italian cuisine is. It's always using the best ingredients. Buffalo butter, the best parm you can find, fresh pasta. Come on now, you know? Straight umami. That parm is just taking this dish to another level. This is 9.8 out of 10. Easy. Easy. So fifth dish, rigatoni carbonada. Classic Roman dish. Again, no modifications to that. But we try to get the best ingredients. We have the agu aguanciale, very good quality. Then our eggs, we get Canastoga eggs from Ontario, which is another level of uh, free range eggs where the yolk is very, very, very orange. Different to regular eggs that we will get here. I'm trying to mimic as much as possible the eggs that we find in Europe. And the result is that mounted perfectly, uh, the eggs are not curdled and uh, guanciale is crispy. Mm. Mm. When you try this, you understand why carbonara is one of the most popular dishes coming out of Italy. It's like the perfect balance of everything. You have the richness coming from the egg yolks, and these eggs are very high quality eggs. You have the saltiness from the guanciale, which is cured pig cheeks. You have the sharpness in the pecorino, the heat from the black pepper corn that's been toasted. It just all comes together as one, and it's a wonderful thing. Carbonara, 9.7, guys, let's do it. Let's go. So number six for the main dish, we have the Bistecca Fiorentina. There is a correction because for it to be a Bistecca Fiorentina, we do need Chianina cattle. So it's a type of cattle coming from Tuscany, from the Chianti region. But Canada has some pretty good beef too. So, I mean, if we can get that, we'll get the next best thing. And we get uh, Alberta beef. We have uh, limited quantities per night. We also have a chalkboard that display the quantities and once one of them is sold, someone goes to the board and just like crosses it out. And uh, when we're sold out, we're sold out and you come tomorrow and we'll have more. Porterhouse, seared, served rare, and uh, that's it.
Olive oil, sea salt, a touch of potatoes just for the fun of it. Doesn't get as uh, simple as that. That's textbook, edge to edge, perfectly cooked steak. I'm gonna go full seagull mold on this steak. Let's do it. Mmm. 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 Very, very tender beef. Perfectly seasoned, nice crust, and crust means flavor. Look at this, you know? Just, it just pulling apart. Oh, mmm. Just because this steak is, you know, a very simple dish, but it's also very well executed, I would give this a 9.2 out of 10. So, uh, for dessert, we have two of my all time favorites and two desserts that, again, we have not taken off the menu since I wouldn't say day one, but almost day one, our tiramisu. And I know that everyone does the tiramisu, but our style is a bit different. So we make our own chiffon cake. Then it's topped with a coffee pastry cream. Uh, we have a bit of chocolate crumble. And then on top of that, we have the traditional mascarpone cream. Mm. Holy shit. Right away, you feel this crazy, feeling of overwhelming, in a good way, creaminess in your mouth, and then the crispiness from the chiffon cake, the taste of the coffee is obviously there, but it's not overpowering. You can taste a bit of the chocolate because it didn't go crazy on the covering the salt thing with cocoa powder. Nothing worse than eating in a tiramisu with choking on the fucking cocoa powder, you know? No one likes that. This is very well balanced. I really like the fact that they are doing chiffon cake in instead of the usual lady fingers. I would give this tiramisu a nine, 0.7 out of 10. And then we have our panna cotta. Again, a bit funkier than a regular uh, panna cotta. I just don't like the texture of gelatin, so we put a lot less so that we can make it into a creamy panna cotta. And here you have it topped with some fennel pollen, sea salt, and uh, olive oil. Enjoy. First thing that just hit me is the rich taste of that Sicilian olive oil. And then you get those nice little notes of the fennel pollen. And at the end, you have this beautiful taste of rich, sweetened cream. And like Chef said, it's not the usual like over gelatin, almost too firm. It's really nice and delicate, perfect balance. And then you get this final note of vanilla at the end. It's perfect, perfectly executed. In the panacotta world, I would give this a 9.6 out of 10. Let's go. People say uh, that Italians talk with their hands, right? But sometimes, I walk in the dining room and I see people taking a bite and they go. I take a lot of pride into that because it shows that people need to have a good food, but they need to have a good time. They're giving you a lot of money to come out and spend hard earned money and you got to give them a, a, a wonderful time with amazing service, put a smile on their face. When you see everybody smiling in your room, maybe it's a food. Maybe they're having an amazing time. Maybe they're celebrating something. Maybe they really like the song that they haven't heard in 25 years. Whatever, right? All good. All good. Oh, oh my God, guys. I am filled with food, but mostly I am filled with joy. That's what I call hospitality done right. If, like me, you'd like to be filled with joy, do yourself a favor and pay a visit to my good people at Selena. Trust me, it is worth the hype. I'd like to give a major shout out to the whole team at Selena. And that's a wrap on today's video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please make sure to like the video. Let us know in the comments which one of the course was your favorite one. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe. We already passed the 70,000 mark. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Let's get there, baby. We'll see you in the next episode of Always Hungry. Peace.